Welcome to the Missions Podcast, the show that explores your hard questions on missions, theology, and practice to help goers think and thinkers go. I'm Alex Kochman, Director of Advancement and Communications, joined by Scott Dunford, West Coast Advancement Coordinator and Pastor of Redeemer Church in Fremont, California. You're getting it. Uh, words, <laughs> lots yes. of words. And our new friend, Katie Webb, who is coordinator for the Cross-Cultural Nursing Program and holds a Master's in Nursing from? Wright State University. Okay, so mm -hmm. not Cedarville. No. but I have my undergrad in Cedarville, though. Cedarville's first in your wow. heart. First. Very good. Yes. There yes. we go. So we'll just hand it over to you. Can we do that? Can we hand it over to you? We want to talk a little bit about, you know, we've been interviewing people here throughout the day. Uh, our listeners have heard this content over a few days or, or weeks as we're, we're putting these episodes out. Okay. But we want people to know about what schools like Cedarville are doing to take majors like nursing or uh, other professions that aren't, you know, your typical biblical studies or uh, Christian leadership type degrees uh, and take those out to the nations. Um, and so obviously, okay, there's physical needs that we have to meet and we have to share the gospel. With, but beyond that, um, tell us about what you do and your heart for your students to discover missions. Okay. So Cedarville has, of course, a nursing program, a traditional four-year nursing program. And then um, about 25, 30 years ago, there were a couple ladies that, um, one specifically, that left teaching at Cedarville and um, went to Togo, West Africa, where she still is a full-time missionary. And she started a school of nursing in Togo. And so the ladies here that, of course, were friends with her because she had taught here, started taking students over with them. And from that, the cross-cultural nursing was born. Um, and there's a lot more detail that goes into it but we'll explain it like that. So now, 25, 30 years later, we still have the minor, we still go to Togo, um, but we've added other pieces to it, and we've adapted some of the courses as time has gone on. So now the minor consists of five nursing courses and um, three, we'll call them elective type courses, although they're limited in what they can do in their electives. They take a communications course, so another language. Um, they take some Bible courses, and then they have one other elective that pulls from a variety of different disciplines they can take. And then those five nursing classes, they start their freshman year, they go all the way through their senior year, and in between that junior and senior year, where they have a really good set of nursing skills and thinking, they go on a cross-cultural internship. Togo could be one of those trips. So they would go for four weeks and work in a hospital in Togo with the Togolese nurses and practice their skills they've been learning here. So what are you hearing from the students when they come back from that experience? How, how does that transform their lives? They always say, there's so much to tell. It was absolutely incredible, um, life-changing. For some of them, it um, encouraged in them what the Lord was already doing. And they said, yes, I want to be a full-time missionary. May not be in that location they did an internship with, but definitely kind of help them know, yes, this is what I want to do. For others, they said, I absolutely loved it, but I've also learned that I don't think I want to be overseas. I want to be more domestic, but I would do it again in a heartbeat if I could. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really neat to see the varying responses when we they come back. Now, first, do me a favor, say, go to Togo 10 times fast. <laughs> you might be able to don't do, it. do it. Okay, all right. You I'm a fast talker, I could do it. Oh, right. wow. Later, off air. Yeah. Uh, but secondly, what are the things that you would say are different about cross-cultural nursing from what you would learn in t typical nursing program? I mean, mm -hmm. obviously the language barrier, cultural right. differences, you know, kind of goes without saying, but the way that you would practice medicine, how does that differ? Drastically. And it depends on where you go. You know, if you were to go and we worked in a hospital in Spain, it would look in many ways very similar to a modern U.S. hospital. Right. But in Togo, for example, they said that what the nurses do is if you needed half of a pill and you needed half of a pill, here in the States, I would give you half and I would waste the other half. In Togo, I put it back in a cup and then it becomes your dose later in the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and the nurses just have pill bottles lined up and they will walk over and get it. Here we have them in a locked system. It's fingerprinted. I can't get in without my finger going with me to the med machine. Um, access to care. Uh, patients can walk for days to get access to care. Um, and when they come to the hospital in especially um, what we used to call third world countries, these patients are much sicker because they are not working so they're not getting paid. They're le leaving their family. It's a three-day walk. They're not going to come unless they have to come. So then by the time they get to the hospital, that pneumonia is now 
life-threatening where it could have been very easily Plus fixed. that's like a lifetime without all the preventative care. Yes. Too. Yes. Now, and, and what I've heard from the medical missionaries that we send, ABWE, our organization focuses a lot on medical missions along with church planting, evangelism, and discipleship, is that you really don't have the luxury of being a, a specialist as much as everyone kind of has to be a generalist. Is yes. that true? Yeah, that's true. They don't have a lot of specialties in those areas. Um, they don't have a lot of women's health. Things like, uh, we had a, actually a girl I graduated with was in Africa and her daughter needed a specialty care and they actually had to leave and go to Europe for it. It didn't exist there. Um, which we don't think of. We say, oh yeah, I have a cardiologist, I have a nephrologist, I have a pulmonologist, just down the road. Wow. Yeah. So for someone like you who didn't get to serve overseas mm -hmm. as a full-time missionary. I didn't either. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, but yet you're deeply involved in training the next generation. Mm -hmm. Like what, what kind of drives you? What, what kind of yeah. helps you get up in the morning as you're thinking about what, what God's called you to do in this unique role? Yeah. I think the thing I want my students to walk away with is first of all, because most of them come in at 18, they have the experiences that their mom and dad have allowed them to have. Right. Um, Which so, is to say not many. Right, <laughs> most likely, yeah. I sure didn't. Yeah. Um, so they, their view is here, and I want their view to just get a little bit bigger mm -hmm. and a little bit bigger. And I mean, I love being an American. I will never change that I'm American. I can go somewhere else and I will still be American. And so I want my students to be able to say, I'm from here and it's okay, but I have a deep respect and desire to learn about you because you're made in God's image. And so you have incredible value and worth. Tell me about yourself, tell me about you. And I'll tell you about me and we'll learn together. It's not at all a, one is better than the other. It's just, that's where the Lord had you grow up. And you got to kind of own that and then do what you can with it. Well, you know, we've talked to a number of, of, of nurses and doctors, mm -hmm. and, and especially in a place like Togo where there's like this, um, there's science, and they understand that there's science, but there's also kind of like a, a spiritual science as well. And the, the mixture of the physical and spiritual is very different. And so when you have a medical person that is trained in the sciences but also says, I believe in God yeah. and has that spiritual component, but, but, but from a, a biblical perspective and worldview, it kind of causes people to stop and think differently. I know that when we were ministering in East Asia, mm -hmm. that was kind of that, like, wait a second, like you're, you're a nurse or you're a doctor, or you're a scientist, and you still believe in God? Explain that. So yeah. you're kind of in a unique position to be able to take care of someone's needs show that you understand how the human body works and how God created the world, but also that you still believe in the Creator. Yes. Um, so what are some of the exciting stories, maybe that, maybe there is no exciting story, I'm kind of setting you up, you know, but what are, you know, can you share any stories of like your graduates who've gone on to, to serve the Lord either here at, in, yeah. in the States or maybe they've gone overseas? It's hard because once they leave, it's really easy to lose yeah. track of them. Yeah. Um, but we do know of a number of our students that went on either just the internship without the minor or went because of being part of the minor that um, one in specific specifically like I said the classmate of mine her and her husband are now full-time missionaries overseas wow. and so the goal had always been that and through Cedarville she was able to get more training in it of course they went on signed on with the mission agency got right. even more yeah. but um, this so they're still full-time in it and then there's other students that went on these trips um, more domestically because we do have some domestic yeah. teams too and that's where they're still working today so and they, even, even if they end up in Dayton they're still impacted for the rest of their life yeah by what they've and we have a there. huge international population here yeah. so yeah, it's not do. uncommon to see various cultures in the hospital so last question what okay. most excites you when you think about missions and your program that you're working mm -hmm. with and the student body here at Cedarville I think the students themselves like they're so excited to love on people and I get to encourage that and feed that and help in some way kind of direct that. Um, a lot of times they'll come in with incredible dreams and ideas and it's like, okay, how do we put feet to the ground to make yeah. all of that a reality? Maybe a piece of that, maybe the <laughs> dream's really big and we need to scale yeah, it back yeah. and, and get more focused. But I think the students themselves, yeah. yeah. 
That's awesome. yeah. been a common theme the whole time we've been here, right? Is the quality <laughs> of the student body. We have their some really great ones. Yeah, their devotion. And thank you for your committedness oh, you're uh, welcome. as well to the program. We're excited. Yeah. And if you're interested in learning more, uh, reach out to us. We'll connect you with Katie. We'll connect you with people serving in healthcare capacities with ABWE or with more information about the Cedarville program. You can go email alex at missionspodcast.com. We'll get you all the information that you need. Or you can go to abwe.org slash healthcare. There's some opportunities there for you as well. But Katie, thanks again for joining us. If you want to get more content, go to missionspodcast.com. Remember to subscribe to this, leave a rating and a positive review. That'll help us get this content in front of others. If you're encouraged by what you hear, go to missionspodcast.com slash support. That'll eliminate some of the overhead involved in bringing you this content. And until next time, thank you for listening.